here you call them and make a scenario okay if this happen what is the way out so these people are very you know specialized management consultant who give you consultancies regarding how you can minimize the loss and the most important stuff is mandatory vacations so if you cannot do job rotation like most banks they cannot afford job rotation because you know they don't have much teller or or their banking is not that much huge or vast so they go for mandatory vacation why is that if now it is unwritten law or unspoken law in the banking sector or financial services sector if somebody is not taking leave it means he is planning big for like a fraudulent activity or something so they give, they gave you mandatory 15 days leave okay we are going to pay for your trip go for family vacation and something as enjoy and on that 15 days they hire somebody else and ask him to find out any mistake if he is doing okay guys you understand yes 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 now with the establishment of e-commerce now it is more important for the company to establish internal controls especially because your customers credit card number is going to be stolen computer viruses and trojan horses and also fishy fishing or fishing expeditions security measures encryption and firewalls so you log on to the company website and a new menu pop up all right taking to you to your competitor website or some other websites this happens in china and also in us as well right similarly uh, country, you know computer viruses mostly they are attached when you click on the payment okay when you click on the pay button there is a small file that is downloaded on your computer and what happen they trying to steal your password and your bank account number and all those stuff right for this purposes you must update or install the encryption and firewalls or you know you hire some security guys to do that okay so the limitation of internal control cost and benefits remember you must see the benefit of internal control if your company is new then and you establish 100% into internal control then you are a fool why because the cost is too much hiring accountant hiring for IT sectors, e-commerce specialists, loss prevention specialists, internal control uh, auditors, outside auditors. It's going to be very, very expensive. It's not like thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. It's it's a million dollar. You have to pay at least one million or two million dollar for loss prevention specialists. These are the team. They come and visit to your organization and give some you know run some different scenarios, simulation. to find out what is the, your weakest point so remember the benefit must outweigh the cost otherwise is going to be like worthless for you to spend so much on in, on internal control and what happen your sales are not that much to give you some profit and that's it so remember where internal control can be circumvented by collusion management override fatigue and negligence if you have 24 hours you know camera on your head would you be okay comfortable for that one of course not if you leave your um, chair and you go to the restroom and you you know you smoke over there and you come back after 15 minutes and the management has to call you because you are away from your um, your laptop for 15 minutes then you need to report to the management that okay explain your answer and something it's fatigue right so it, it's basically in 
very tight internal control going to give you less productivity than before that's why in management we we call this give autonomy to your employees to do the job you do you give the job to the employees and let them do how comfortable they are and when comfortable they are to complete the job rather controlling the employees rather controlling the stuff control the output that's it all right now here we go the most important stuff the numerical part so up till now we have established control i think let's take a break and then we start how we account for cash and all those stuff okay let's take a 15 okay, minutes, then we start from here design and use the bank reconciliation Hey class, welcome back for the break. So we just finished our discussion on internal control and how this is important for the company. So let's talk about our third learning objective, which is design and use a bank reconciliation. So, so documents. used to control a bank account number 1 it's a signature card which shows your signature specimen okay deposit ticket there going to be a deposit receipt if you deposit there going to be there going to be a check if you deposit check bank statement and bank reconciliation so these are individual documents bank statement is also individual document but this is bank reconciliation which is the responsibility of the accountant to make so the idea of bank reconciliation is that for example you write down a check customer okay and today is for example 28 of january but the customer didn't presented in the bank for example on 26 your cash book your cash account shows you have six thousand dollar in your bank account and your bank account also has six thousand dollar on twenty seven you write a check when you write a check and you gave it to the customer you deduct one thousand according to you there must be on 28th of january according to you there must be 5000 cash in the bank account but the bank statement shows you still have 6000 it means bank account and your cash book are not equal does it mean that somebody make a fraudulent activity answer is no all right for example there going to be unpresented checks or maybe other way around you received you are receiving from customer 5000 according to you your cash account would be Eleven thousand, but when you receive the bank statement, it still says six thousand. Why? Because check needs at least three to five days 
clear. We call this transit cash in transit. All right. But since bank statement is coming on 28th of January, so they emailed you the bank statement. Maybe the check is cleared on 30th of January. And on 30th of January, your balance is 11,000. But you receive the bank account, bank statement saying 6,000. So does it mean this is a fraud? Answer is no. So this is a normal business practice that bank account balance and your cash book balance, your cash record doesn't match each other. They are the different stuff. For example, banking charges, you don't know how much bank will charge unless you find out through bank statement, okay, this much charges deducted by the bank. Okay, so today we will be learning this bank reconciliation statement. So let's talk about the signature card. It protects against forgery so that nobody else can copy your signature. Okay, deposit ticket. It is proof of deposit of the transaction. Check which has signature of maker, payee, and bank name, and you have a copy of this one, right? So you can establish internal control. So this is the example of a bank here, a check here. So serial number, maker, a name, amount, signature, right? So remember the last three digit would be the serial number here as well. So that somebody else didn't make some kind of extra clever stuff and copy your signatures and all the stuff, this kind of stuff. So that basically, you know, those who are, uh, who belong to banking services professional, they already know what are their checks, uh, you know, or what are their uh, you know, symbols to find out whether this check is authentic or not, okay? Bank statement which reports customer's cash activity during the period. They will email you and also they will send you, if you request them, they will also send you the printed version. So this is like a bank service, summary bank statement. Bank, bank statement, okay? So it shows you, okay, your deposits are like this, electronically fund transferred, right? 